Thank you very much, Sarah. <laughs> Thank you very much for that introduction. It's great to be with all of you here today. Uh, I want to share just a bit about our work that we're doing here at Digital Green, uh, which, as Sarah mentioned, we're trying to bring together technology and social organization to amplify the effectiveness of existing agricultural extension systems. Now, you're all very familiar with the challenge of agricultural extension. Communities are large and diverse. Uh, terrains are difficult to navigate and farms are remote. Even in a country like India with over 100,000 public and private extension officers or Ethiopia with its 54,000 extension officers, it still is a daunting challenge. Not just because of the issue of motivation for farmers to trust an extension agent coming in from the outside to exchange a new practice or a new seed technology, but also for extension agents who are toiling out in the sun and in India finding that less than 2% of farmers actually are uh, up, uh, expressed that they've actually learned a practice that they've applied from an extension agent for themselves. At the same time, these very same communities report that 12% of them have exchanged information with one another, with their neighbors, with their peers in the marketplace about what crops they grew and how they grew them to exchange and learn about some new practice or tool that they actually applied for themselves. And what that implies is that these social networks that these agricultural communities already have amongst one another are really the most effective way in which extension, or rather knowledge exchange, is taking place. And what we're trying to do at Digital Green is to build upon these existing social networks that both government, private, and civil society organizations that are involved in agricultural extension are already engaged with and trying to leverage technology to provide mainly three types of support. One is targeting of locally relevant content. Two is to create incentives, some of which may be non-monetary in no nature, to create leaders of achievement where farmers can literally be seen as the best farmer within their respective communities. And finally, to connect these rural communities, which are increasingly disconnected from urban areas like here in Delhi, uh, just as we see in, in parts of the West, and trying to see how they can be connected using tools of technology for access to markets and even just general incentives that can be built by creating some of these links between rural and urban communities. So I'll start with the approach. The approach basically begins by us partnering with a government department or an NGO or a private uh, agribusiness that is conducting an agricultural extension uh, intervention, which might be based on farmer field school, demonstration plot, exposure visit types of interventions. And essentially what we do is in each of the districts where these organizations operate, we train four to six individuals from the community to produce short eight to ten minute videos that are essentially by farmers for farmers. And as these videos are being produced, we capture data along the way about what these videos capture, what individuals are featured in them, what season uh, has that practice been conducted in, what crop is being spoken about. And I'll share a little bit later how that data is really useful. But essentially, the real focus of these videos is those local farmers that people can identify with. The first questions that we often get when people watch these videos is what is the name of the person in the video and which village is he or she from before they consider the agronomic cost benefits of some of these practices. People really want to identify with the folks that they are watching these videos of to see whether they're similar resource constrained individuals as themselves that they can trust and consider that the practices that they're sharing might be relevant to themselves. These videos are then shared across the rural communities in which we work uh, using a battery-operated Pico projector, which I have in my hand and which is sort of displayed here in this picture. It's a battery-operated projector that allows us to screen these videos in places that have limited internet and electricity. And the primary forum in which these videos are being screened are largely farmer clubs and women's self-help groups that are already involved in some micro savings or credit types of transactional activities. And now with the introduction of these videos, there's now this knowledge sharing dimension to their uh, meetings. And these videos are screened to small groups, just about 15 people at a time, every two weeks on a different agricultural practice that's in sync with the agricultural season, such that people who watch these videos in the two weeks subsequent to watching this video could actually apply the practices that they see for themselves in their fields. And as these videos are being screened, this village level 
intermediary is really important who screens the video because he or she is pausing, rewinding, asking questions as that video is being screened to have an interactive discussion amongst the community and also to capture feedback in terms of the questions that the community members might express while they watch these videos as well as data about what practices people actually apply after they watch these videos. So, so far, about 2,600 videos have been produced in 20 different languages. All of these videos are available on YouTube. And we're now working in about 2,000 villages uh, here in India, in seven states in the country, and as well as into parts of Ethiopia and Ghana, with 150,000 farmers watching these videos every two weeks. And what we've done also with all this data that we're capturing at the time of video production as well as at the time of video dissemination and post the screenings when adoption data is reported, we're building out these histories of these individual farmers over the course of time to essentially build a Nielsen ratings type of system for the videos that are being screened. So you can see online on an analytic set of dashboards what's the most popular practice in a particular place at a particular time, what's the least popular practice, which which of these videos might be resulting in more questions or less questions than others, and that might be more effective in terms of resulting in adoptions of practices versus others. These videos, as I mentioned, are all available on YouTube. We've also built up a layer on top of YouTube to make it easier for people to search and browse through these videos. We've essentially built a Khan Academy-like view to these videos where you can vi watch these videos in sequence, like an online courseware of sorts. And in addition to seeing the videos, you can actually see data about how those videos were used in terms of viewership and people's adoptions of these practices after they saw those videos. And you can search and browse through these videos based on various agricultural parameters like crop, seasonality, language, and the like. Alongside that data, we also have that qualitative feedback that's being captured from those offline video screens that are occurring in those self-help group settings. And those questions are coming in from those uh, village intermediaries who are involved in screening these videos. And the questions that come in are of various types. Some are questions of clarification that folks don't understand a particular uh, practice or video that they've watched. Or there are questions that they might need a particular product, service, or resource. Uh, like perhaps a seed to be able to take action on the practices that they also viewed. And finally, there's also questions that are orthogonal to the, uh, to the video content that they have viewed. For example, they may have seen a video on some wheat-related practice, but perhaps there's another pressing issue that people have with respect to some banana disease issue. And these questions then inform the production of the next set of videos that gets produced. For us, it's an iterative process of creating these videos informed by the needs and interests that the communities are expressing. We've also plotted this data uh, on a Google map so that we can actually see the trends amongst these communities of how, for example, a crop disease or a pest might be spreading over the course of time as we're, these videos are being screened every two weeks and we're gathering this data about the questions that folks are expressing, the practices that they're applying. We can actually see these trends in near real time on a bi-weekly sort of basis and be able to target the production and distribution of videos to address these issues before they become larger ones across a larger uh, swath of geographies. We're also seeing how we can use this data to create non-monetary based leaders of achievement within these communities. Obviously, amongst many of these farming communities, there's this sense that perhaps agriculture is a vocation of last resort. And what we're really trying to do with the use of these videos is to bring in a sense of professionalism and science into the practice of, of being a farmer. And in addition, we created these leaderboards where farmers can actually see themselves with respect to their peers and consider through these notional types of scores that we've created basis, based on the percentage of practices that a farmer has adopted to the total number, for example, that he or she has viewed as a way of ranking these individuals. We've also done this similar rank ranking for the extension agents so that they can also see their performance with respect to their peers. And some of our partners, uh, especially in the government, uh, use these leaderboards to incentivize even with monetary-based approaches to give a sense of achievement of performance amongst these groups. And because all of this data and all of these tools are online, it provides a lot of transparency and accountability to folks to not game the system. In addition, we're actually also exposing the individual farmers' databases through a notion called Farmer Book, 
which essentially is a Facebook of all the farmers that we work with. As I said, we're capturing data about what videos a farmer is watching every two weeks, the questions that he or she expresses, the likes that they may make to a video, the practices that they may ultimately actually adopt. And on Farmer Book, you can actually see this data for an individual farmer and see for this woman in this village in Orissa, what are the practices that she's watched and what are the practices that she's adopted over the course of time? And how does that compare with fellow members in her self-help group? And the aim of this platform is really to provide a reflection uh, opportunity for these groups to think about why one woman may have adopted one practice, another woman may have adopted another practice, and perhaps there's an, an opportunity to bring these two together to be able to share experiences and perhaps drive greater take up of some of these practices that are being exchanged. We've also begun to see how we can link this data that is being captured in these rural communities that are primarily mostly offline, though we have actually seen a greater interest and in take up of even these videos amongst online audiences. In the last year alone, we've seen about 800,000 views to our, our videos, which are very local language how-to types of videos on YouTube. Uh, and as a result of that, we built some tools online that connect the data and the communities that we work with offline. So we've established a connection with Facebook so that you can actually follow a farmer uh, and be able to track their progress. Whenever they adopt a new practice, for example, you can receive an update on your Facebook wall that th this woman has adopted this new practice. And as farmers themselves are coming increasingly online with various mobile tools as well, uh, this is a mechanism for them to also reflect and share with one another. We've gone further by even trying to build an entertainment layer to this ex knowledge exchange. So we built a game on Facebook called Wonder Village, which like other Facebook games like that you may have come across, like Farmville and Cityville, which have user bases of a, something around the order of 200 million people playing these games an average of eight minutes a day. We're trying to connect these folks uh, with these rural communities in a fun and educational way. So in this game, you build a virtual village economy by growing crops that you supply to industries that supply them to institutions like banks, schools, uh, and the like. And you get to play with, of course, your Facebook friends like any other Facebook game. But within this game, there's also this notion, notion of building the village together with the local community itself through uh, a notion called village gurus who turn out to be the actual farmers that we work with in these rural communities and that connects you to farmer book and so we're trying to bring these virtual and real communities together in a, a way of, of driving greater connections between these two online and offline types of audiences but just to kind of conclude Essentially what you know, we sometimes think about in terms of the digital divide is that if only there was technology that could cross this chasm that we'd be able to uh, really see that this developing and developed world divides would come together. But whether we're talking about the use of Facebook or whether we're talking about a new seed variety, there's a lot of infrastructure and foundational work that really has to go into the use of physical infrastructure, human capital, political institutions, and finance before some of these tools of technology can come along and really drive greater efficiency and productivity. And so in our work, that's where we found partnering the use of video together with these public, private, and civil society extension systems is really where we're able to find that we can amplify the efficiency of the work that they're already engaged with and where the opportunity exists to broaden the participation of the communities that they work with. And that's where video, for instance, can be one type of technology that can spark the curiosity of farmers to take their one small step towards improving their lives and those around them. And with that, I thank you. <laughs>